Hello and welcome to Fallout 76. Today I have some tips for new players that should help you with your journey out into Appalachia. Okay, tip number one starts right here in the vault. So the first thing you've done, you've already picked up your Pip-Boy, you've created your character, and you are supposed to leave the vault. You're supposed to leave this room. But before you do that, there's a couple of things you need to do. And we'll turn right around and go right into the bedroom. First thing you want to do, you'll see the bed and you want to rest. And what you want to do is rest until you see that well-rested pop up in the upper left-hand corner there. Usually takes about 30 seconds or so. After you do that, get out of the bed. And if we look in the Pip-Boy right here, you'll see we are well-rested. And that is the result of sleeping in the bed. And you can see for two hours, we get a 5% XP bonus. So that'll help you level up quicker, which is a good thing. The other thing we want to do is play the guitar. And this is another thing. It'll last about 30 seconds or so. You'll just play the same riff over and over again. And then you'll eventually get well-tuned up there in the upper left-hand corner. Once that's done, you want to finish playing the guitar. And again, we'll be back into the Pip-Boy. And now you see we have well-tuned for an hour, which gives us AP regen plus 25. Now, AP stands for action points, which is basically like your stamina. If you haven't played this game before, you're unfamiliar with what that means. That's basically your stamina. And it's actually pretty important uh, just overall in the game. So that's certainly helpful, especially at a lower level. Now, once we've done those two things, then you want to make your way out of the vault. So tip number two will happen when you leave the vault, you'll be presented with a couple of choices. When you walk through the vault door, you'll, you'll see this screen, which will give you a couple of options on how to start. So if you pick the fresh dweller option, you will leave the vault, you'll level up immediately and you'll be level two. If you pick the battle ready dweller option, you will leave the vault at level 20 and you will have a choice of one of five predefined loadouts. And you can actually select it and actually look at the loadouts before you actually make your final decision. You can, you see on the bottom, you can view perks. Obviously, if you're a new player, looking at the perks probably isn't gonna be all that helpful because you're not familiar with the game at all. So let me just say these loadouts generally are not very good and uh, I would not choose this. So it does say it's the best choice. I disagree with that. There's There are a few reasons for that. Number one, if you do this predefined loadout, uh, maybe you're doing it because you want it to be easier. It actually isn't. Enemies in this game level up uh, to you. So if you are level 20 when you leave the vault, your enemies will be level 20 as well. So as far as that goes, it's not going to make any difference. However, these loadouts actually aren't very good. So you're actually going to be uh, kind of an under-optimized level 20 character. And so you're probably going to have a more difficult time than if you left it at level 2. Uh, but the biggest reason for me is that if I'm leaving the vault, this is my very first time playing. I'm my brand new character. I've never played the game before. I want the best experience. I want the full experience. And so I think you're cheating yourself if you start at level 20. I think level two is your best option for your first character. Other characters do whatever. Maybe start level 20 because you want to have more of a challenge or you want to do something different. But for your first character, I think just to get the best experience, the fullest experience, level two is the way to go. So we're going to choose the Fresh Dweller option. Now, even then, you're going to have five choices. Basically, all this will determine is what your starting perk card is. Your, even though they're showing like different weapons, different things, your weapons, your gear, your food, everything is exactly the same no matter which one of these you choose. The only thing that matter, the only thing that changes is your first perk card. You're not going to know what to do, probably. You have no idea. You haven't played the game before. I would go with Action Dweller. I think that's a pretty good general first perk to take for kind of any build. I think it's fairly useful. So that's the way I would go. It kind of gives you flexibility with what you're going to do next. So when you leave the vault, the first thing you want to do is join a team. And the way you do that is through the social menu. So the type of team you're looking for is a casual team. And the reason for that is casual teams award an intelligence buff for every player on the team. And teams consist of one to four players. So for a full team, you get plus four intelligence. Each point of intelligence translates into roughly 2% more experience uh, for every point. So if I'm on a full team with plus four intelligence, I'm going to get plus eight experience, which means I'll level up quicker. And it counts you as well. So even if you're on a team by yourself, that's still plus one intelligence, 2% more experience, which isn't a lot, but it is something and it doesn't cost you anything to have. The next tip has to do with teams as well. Now you can see on the map, you'll see white dots. Those white dots are other players and Yellow dots, unfortunately, I don't have more than one teammate. I've only got the one. So the team captain shows up like this with a uh, star like that. But if he, if there was another player on the team, these, these white dots would be yellow dots. And one thing you could do with teammates is if you click on them, you have the option to fast travel to them. And the benefit of that is using them to pick up locations. So I, 
This is not. This doesn't mean to follow them around. Now, do your own thing. Don't uh, don't travel to them and follow them around. That would just be annoying. But every once in a while, maybe there's a spot on the map you need to pick up. One of your teammates happens to be there. You could fast travel to them for free, and you pick up a new location. So that is another benefit of being on a team. Now, next up, we have donation boxes. We're still right here by the vault. It's just up at the top of the stairs there. And these boxes, basically yellow crate or uh, re yellow red crates that are there. There are a lot of them in the world. They're all over the place. And these are places where other players can leave extra stuff for you. Maybe they might leave you healing items or weapons or ammunition, whatever. Even if other players don't leave things in these boxes, uh, the game will still generate them. So you'll find I've seen ammunition plans, armor pieces, weapons, all kinds of stuff. And as a new player, you basically want to just pick up everything. And that is what we are going to do. We're just going to take all of these things, just loot all. And uh, there we have it. Free stuff right out of the gate. So next up, we have contextual ammo. So what that actually means is when you loot dead enemies or ammo containers, ammunition in those boxes will actually be specific to the weapon that you have equipped rather than just random bits of ammo, unless you're playing melee. So if you have a knife equipped or a sword or something, you're just going to get random ammo. But in this case, so I have a 10 millimeter pistol. And when I search these uh, ammo boxes, there's 10 millimeter in there. There's some 10 millimeter in there, along with other types of ammo. But uh, yeah, that is a good way to accumulate ammo for weapons that you are using. And you can see the enemy here that I killed, this ghoul, also has 10 millimeter ammo on it. And that is because I have a 10 millimeter pistol equipped. Next up, what you want to do is you want to loot and scrap everything. So see, we have a body here. Now you do have the option. I can just click on the individual items just right here and take them one at a time. And if you see that, I have the option of nearby corpses. What this will do is actually bring up a list of all of the loot on all of the bodies, all of the dead bodies that are in the area. Now, unfortunately, there aren't any others, so it's only gonna show the, uh, the loot that's in this one, but you wanna definitely pick it up and you can just use take all rather than looting things one at a time. So we've done the first part, we've done a lot of looting, and now what we wanna do is scrap what we have so we can see everything that we've looted. We've looted a couple of pipe pistols and then just miscellaneous junk. And the reason that looting is important, number one, uh, maybe we need another pistol. So looting, uh, picking up extra guns, maybe this will be an improvement over what we're already using. In this case, it's not, but suppose it was, or suppose we didn't have a gun, we could use one of these. And this game kind of revolves around crafting and you need raw materials to upgrade your weapons, to craft new ones, upgrade your armor, uh, build your camp items. So having resources is really important. And the way you get that is by picking up junk. However, the weight of junk can actually add up really quickly. So what you want to do here is you want to find a workbench. This one happens to be a weapons workbench. There are a few different kinds and you just select scrap items. And this is going to show me everything in my new tab. And the new tab consists of anything I've picked up since I logged into this server. So there could be other things that I've carried over. Maybe my game crashed. Maybe I uh, changed to a different server. Then it wouldn't show up here. But since I've been on this server, this is everything that I've picked up. And you can just scrap all junk. You see that option at the bottom of the screen. And it will show you all of the resources you're going to get. And it will also do reduce the weight of what you're carrying. So once we've done that, it uh, has reduced our weight. But another reason we want to pick up items is to learn modifications. So for example, we have these three pipe pistols. Whenever you scrap weapon, uh, weapon or armor, you actually have a chance to learn a modification for that weapon or armor. So in this case, and of course this character doesn't know any modifications because it's brand new. So I should have a pretty high chance of learning at least one mod from scrapping these things. So we scrap a pipe pistol. And if we learn a mod, you'll hear a sound and it will trigger and it'll show up in the upper left-hand corner. And you can see that I unlocked a precise recoil grip just from scrapping that. And if I keep going, standard stock, and you can also see when I scrap, I'm getting some cork, some rubber, some steel. So it's reducing what I'm, uh, how much weight I'm carrying. It's giving me raw materials and it's giving me a chance to learn modifications for weapons for that particular type of weapon rather. So the next tip is to pick and cook everything. When I say pick, I'm talking in terms of plants. Specifically things like tato plant, you can see they look like tomatoes, post-apocalyptic tomatoes. So we want to pick those, but there's also food right here laying around. You will find loose food in the world. So we have some corn, we'll take that. We'll take some more tatoes, uh, squirrel bits. That sounds like food. Once in a while, you'll see these things. So there is a recipe right here, iguana soup. You have the option to just pick it up. If you click read, it'll just put it in your inventory. But if you hold down, it'll learn it. And now I've learned a new recipe that I can make. And dirty water is the same thing. That will turn into boiled water. There's nothing in this lunch pail. But the way you cook food is to go to the cooking station. 
and it will give you all kinds of options. Now, what you can do is toggle craftable, and what that will do, it'll actually show you just what you have the ingredients for. So you won't have to do as much scrolling. So if we do toggle craftable, it's only gonna show us stuff that we actually have the ingredients for. And another thing about crafting just in general, not just with uh, cooking, but maybe you're crafting ammunition or armor or weapons. When you do craft, not only does it use uh, materials that you have that you're carrying with you on your character, but if you have something in your stash box stored away, it will actually pull from that as well. So you don't need to carry a ton of stuff to be able to craft, or you don't need to go to your stash box to craft. You just craft and it will automatically go from anything you have either on your person or, well, on your character's person rather, or in your stash box. So we can make three Tato juices, and we do that, you can see we're getting a small amount of experience. You see that on the very bottom of the screen. It's not a ton, but that is one benefit to uh, cooking food, or actually any kind of crafting at all, is you will learn a bit of experience. Now, if we look at the food we've crafted, here's the foods. For example, we have awesome opossum bacon that we cooked. We got that, we just needed wood and possum meat. And we, we did have that, so we we're able to cook it. But you can see we're actually getting plus uh, plus two luck. And that'll last you probably 30 minutes, I'm guessing, maybe an hour. Foods usually, the food buffs either last 30 minutes or an hour. I don't know this one off the top of my head. But you can get food buffs, so that's another benefit to cooking food. A third benefit is if maybe you're cooking food and it's not really something that your character wants or you're going to use, you can sell it and get money. So that's another reason to cook food. So it, there's a lot of benefits to it. So the next tip has to do with, well, first of all, before we get to the next tip, so here, this is gonna be your first destination if you follow the quests and the order they're presented to you. This will be your first destination, but you can see there is another donation box. And here we have some ammo and a Molotov cocktail. So that's something you can grab. But what you'll see, you'll see it here, you'll see it at other settlements is these vending machines. This one is ammunition and this one is medical supplies. Now, if we go into the ammunition one, you can see the ammo, 38 ammo is two caps, 44 is seven caps, 45, five caps. And for the, and if you don't know, caps are bottle caps, that's short for bottle caps, that is the currency. In, well, in this game, it's one of the currencies, but that's a traditional Fallout currency. And so what I can tell you about these machines, never ever use them, the, the prices are insane. Uh, this ammo should cost you one cap. That's how much it should be. This, this type of, com I mean, this is pretty common ammo. This should cost you one cap. So you definitely don't want to use the ammunition machine. You don't want to use the medical supplies machine. You'll just get ripped off every time. So the next tip is actually to use player vendors instead. And you find player vendors at player camps. Now this is what a player camp looks like. You'll see the icon on the map. There's one, there's another one over there. Up here in the upper right hand corner, there is another one. Now, if you look at the symbols on the on the uh, on the player's camps, the icon, there's a couple of symbols. So this red one means they have a shelter. And V means they have a vendor, and that's what you're looking for. And if you hover over the camp like this, it'll actually tell you, not only it tells you the name of the person who owns the camp, but it also tells you the types of items they have in their camp. So they've got a weapon, they have miscellaneous stuff, they have a food item. This, this, this uh, particular uh, camp doesn't look like it has a lot of stuff. They do have 169 plans though. And here is another camp, it has Looks like more things. They have some ammo, they have food items, they have some mods. Those could be weapon or armor mods. Uh, looks like they have a piece of armor, they have meds, they have drinks, they have plans, and they have apparel. So if you wanna go to a player camp, you just click on it and fast travel. There will be a cost of caps because there is a cost to fast travel, but you uh, can fast travel to that camp and we can check it out. Now there is ne not necessarily an easy way to spot vending machines because there are a lot of different designs. This one happens to look like a uh, like a cash register. But if you click on that, we can actually go in and see, hopefully they have ammo and I could show you, well, see, they're actually giving away ammo. That's another thing. So sometimes you'll find that where people just have stuff priced at zero and they just want to get rid of it. So that's one reason to go to player camps, but you can see 45 ammo, they're charging one cap, which is what, what it should cost, 10 millimeter. So all these common uh, ammo types, they're costing one cap and that's what you should be paying. So the next tip is to join events. That's something you definitely want to do. Now, if you pull up the map, you will see at the bottom left-hand corner under world activity, that'll just show up and it'll show there is a new public event. Now that one is actually a special event that's just going now, but if it wasn't there, it would be some other event. And the way events work in this game is they are every 20 minutes at the top, starting at the top of the hour. So the top of the hour, 20 minutes after and 40 minutes after there will be a public event that everyone can join. You can either go on the map, hover over that, and click on the event to join that. Now what'll happen is it'll pop up and it will tell you, so you can see a difficulty level, ignore that. Always ignore that, doesn't matter. Some will say that they're hard, 
don't worry about it. If there's an event, just join it. Other players will join. The worst thing that happens is you may die in the event and there are no consequences for death in this game. All your all that will happen is your character will respawn and keep going in the event. So you can get really good experience. It's a good way to level up your character. You can also get maybe weapons and armor. You can get caps, you can get healing items, you can get ammunition. It's definitely well worth doing and it's fun. You can have fun doing a thing. Events are basically a time limited, it's not really a quest because you're in a fixed location, but consider it like a timed quest that the whole server can participate in. Usually they're 10 minutes or less and then you can go back to what you were doing. So next up we have tag for search and basically what that does, it gives you a way to tag specific components when you are searching for junk or picking up junk. So suppose we wanted to craft a 10 millimeter pistol. You can see on the right there, it shows you what it, what it takes. It takes adhesive, aluminum, oil, screws, springs, steel, and it also tell you how much you have and how much it requires per the thing. Now I'm on a higher level character. So of course I have all these materials, but you can see on the bottom there's tag for search. And if you are missing any of those components, uh, that would not be grayed out. And you click on that and it would let you tag it. Unfortunately, I have all of those components, so I don't have any way to tag those through this particular men menu, but there is another way. And you do that through the Pip-Boy menu. So you wanna go over to the junk tab and make sure you have some of whatever that is in your menu. So, I mean, suppose you have, uh, suppose you have like, uh, so we have an excess adhesive. So suppose it takes two to craft, but I only, I have three. So I definitely have enough, but I don't have as much as I want and I want to find more adhesive. So what I would do is I would go here and on the bottom you'll see component view and you want to switch to component view and it'll actually show you the actual name of it. So adhesive, you know, that's adhesive, that's plastic. And if I just select those, it'll put like a little magnifying glass there. And so whenever I come across a, a junk that has that component, it'll actually show a little magnifying glass. So right over here, you see we've got some wonder glue and there's a magnifying glass. So that lets me know that this particular junk item has a component that I'm looking for. So I would definitely want to pick that up. Same thing, we have a cigarette carton right there. Same deal, we know that this carton has something that I'm looking for. Maybe I remember, maybe I don't, but I know that I've tagged it and that'll let me know I definitely want to pick that up. The next has to do with legendary uh, weapons and armor. So basically you have the possibility to have armor and weapons that will have special extra effects on them. And you can have between one and three effects. For example, I have this, uh, this armor piece and you can see I have three different effects. Being hit in melee causes me to become invisible once every 30 seconds, plus five action point regen and a chance to deal fire damage to melee attackers. Now this isn't a particularly good piece, I'm not gonna go into why, but it's not a particularly good piece and I don't want it. So what do you do with legendary pieces that you don't want? Well, one thing you could do if you have a vendor at your camp, you could sell them. Or what you could do is you can go, this is a legendary exchange machine. People just call them script machines typically. And you would actually put it inside of here. Now these machines are all over the place. They're at train stations, they're at settlements. I happen to be at the rusty pick and you just select it and I click on that and that in exchange for putting that in the machine, I'm going to get legendary script back and I'm getting 24. So I do that and it gives me 24 legendary script. Now to spin legendary script, there is only one place you can go for that. And that is the rusty pick that I showed you on the map. And this is the purveyor. And the way you spend it, you open the trade menu. Now you're presented with a kind of a confusing option. So I'm not gonna go into detail. You'll figure that as you go, but you can pick up legendary armor pieces, legendary melee weapons, range weapons, power armor, range weapons, and they can be between one and three stars. The number of stars determines how many effects you have on the weapon. So a one star item would be, give you one special effect. A three star would give you three special effects. Uh, the problem with this is it will give you random effects and random pieces. So suppose I like rifles, I could say, oh, I'm gonna buy a legendary range weapon and I'll do three stars so I'll get three effects. It may give you a missile launcher, which isn't gonna be helpful if you are a sniper. So this is not something you wanna do. You wanna spend your legendary script on legendary modules. They cost 50 each. So if you were to buy you know, all 100 of those, that would be 5,000 script. Uh, and what legendary modules are actually used for is legendary crafting. That way you can still, you don't get to specify the effects. It is still a slot machine as far as that goes, but at least you can de uh, determine the type of gear it is, whether it's a specific weapon, specific armor. So say you had a hunting rifle and you want to put legendary effects on it, you craft a hunting rifle and then you use your legendary modules to apply one to three random effects on that. So all of your scripts should be spent on legendary modules 
And you shouldn't use those legendary modules until you're level 50, because that's where weapons and armor max out. Some maxes at 45, some maxes at level 50, but wait until your character is level 50 to spend any of your legendary modules. The next thing I would tell you to do would be to capture workshops. And you can recognize workshops on the map. It'll be, the, the icon will be a little symbol. It'll be a circle with the tools in it. There's one here. See, there's another one up there. Another one over there. I think there's 18 or 19 of them. I don't know off the top of my head. I think there's 18 or 19 of them across the map. But this is Gorge Junkyard, and it is probably the first workshop you'll encounter as a, as a newer player. Now, once you have crossed over into the workshop, once you've actually entered the area of the workshop, you can go into the pit boy and under data and under side work, uh, side quests, it'll actually show you uh, a quest to claim the workshop. So if you make that active, normally it would show you where the enemies are. This is actually pointing you at the, uh, this is where you wanna go to claim it. If you, if you do activate, it's actually gonna say, clear enemies from Gorge Junkyard. And they'll just be kind of all over. Uh, mostly it'll be, ro at least here it'll be robots. Enemies in the, in the workshops, for the most part, tend to be simpler, easier enemies, at least in this part of the map. And once you've cleared a few enemies, as you get down to the final few, it'll actually put map markers. So you can see I have three enemies left. There's two over there, and there's one over there. Now, once you clear the final enemy, you'll know it's the final enemy because you'll actually get some caps. So once I kill this enemy, you can see I got 20 caps, which tells me that was the last enemy in the workshop. And then we want to go back over here where the quest is telling us and click on claim. Now it will cost you 25 caps. So you actually spend five caps to uh, get a workshop overall, but it's well worth it. But once the workshop has been claimed, it'll have a little pop-up saying I claimed the workshop and you will get some rewards for that. And you'll get a little bit of scrap, not much, but the main reason you want to do it, you'll get a little bit of experience, not much again. The main reason to do this is for the plans. I got some a black titanium scrap, I got some waste oil, but I got a wooden crate plan. And that's usually what you'll get from workshops is you get plans for your camp. So you get plans for like generators, power connectors, uh, water purifiers, stuff like that. Now these are plans you can buy, but these are this is a way you to get them for free. So definitely take workshops and you don't have to hold it because what'll happen is eventually you get an, uh, another event will pop up that you'll have to defend the workshop against waves of enemies. You don't need to do that. You can just ignore it and just go on your merry way. The main thing you wanna do is just claim the workshop, get the scrap, get the plans, and then just move on. And I think I saved the most important tip for last, and that is don't worry about making mistakes. This game has a lot of information to give you and it's really inconsistent in a lot of places. And it's very easy to get overwhelmed and get confused. And the only solution to that is time. The more you play the game, the more you'll pick up on things and you'll realize that nothing you do is permanent. Uh, you can make the worst mistake at all of all with your character. You can do terrible perk cards, make awful decisions. All of it can be changed. All of it can be redone. So don't worry about that. Just focus on having a good time. Hopefully you found these tips helpful. If you did, please hit one of the buttons down below and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Thank you very much.